Hello, everyone. Thanks, Concha, for having me here today. I'm going to share today uh, on this topic around strengthening of national healthcare systems from my point of view in, for SMA in Malaysia. The initiative taken was to build awareness as well as willingness with the various stakeholders to improve medical care and support for families. But when I first started this, I had no experience in healthcare. Uh, it was early days still in rare disease. So um, I didn't have the, neither the experience or the background. And to be honest, I didn't have any prior interest in healthcare. So the way that I found easier to start with is just to take a very you know, lay person view on what I needed to do. Uh, and it became sort of just this, which is, you know, oh, you need to know more about, you know, spinal muscular atrophy. Um, I would like you to understand what it means, its impact, and what we could, you could do to improve the quality of life of fa for families like myself and others. And in order to do that, I think we all need to work together to strengthen, you know, the care and support. And we need to also enable and empower families themselves, right? As well as the other stakeholders and medical professionals, you know, uh, allied health caregivers uh, to raise the standards of care for what they need. Now, I didn't then, it's only having thought about it that way and talking to people, uh, it then became aware that there are certain things that are done within healthcare, which I didn't know the language for before, that made sense to answer some of these questions. So the first one became what was then an incident study, um, prevalence and incident study of SMA in Malaysia. The second one, which is an impact, was really an impact of the disease study. The third about working together, I learned these new terms, multi-stakeholder engagements. Uh, and lastly, in terms of empowering, uh, it was a care guide, which I never got. My son was first diagnosed. And what were the circumstances that motivated myself, uh, and I founded a nonprofit organization in 2016 called We Care Journey uh, to undertake this initiative. When we did the study on the burden of disease, you know, one of the parents, the father of two children with SMA type one, um, and this is a quote from him, which is doctors did not offer much help. Uh, and I can share that because I went through that personal journey for many years. Um, and we spent a lot of time, a lot of money going from experts to experts. And essentially, we were told that this is a fatal disease. Uh, take your son home, you know, do what you can. There was very little advice, you know, very little um, we were given to take greater initiative. And although you can read about, you know, a lot of uh, standards of care, uh, intervention that was uh, available by Googling, uh, but the experience here wasn't quite the same. Uh, as I then ventured out from Malaysia to start to meet with biotechs and pharma to, to understand, you know, what it took to, to change this space. And of course, I was quite keen all the, all the while with clinical trials and access to drug therapies. Um, this is what one of the CEOs told me in one of the conferences overseas, which is countries like Malaysia, you know, because it's a direct question to him, are not ready. You know, and, and that's quite, you know, um, jarring for me, which is like, what does it take? Because I haven't been experienced in healthcare, right? I think if my son is not well, don't the doctors come running forward to try to help? Doesn't pharma then rally behind them? And doesn't all that get taken care? Uh, but no, it's not. And, and it's, you know, over time you start to understand, well, for rare diseases, it does work differently. If it was cancer, it was diabetes and all this, I think a lot of it is a lot more established and yes, help would be there, uh, but not for rare conditions. So that became like, okay, what do you need to do to get things ready? Um, which led to this initiative, which is what we aim to achieve. Um, but there were so many things as you talk to people that should be done. And you think, oh my God, this is such a long list. And with this long list, it requires different people doing different things, right? And as the patient and caregiver, I'm really none of any of these things, right? I don't do research. Right, I don't write standards of care. I, I don't treat patients. There's so many things I don't do. Um, so what can we do though? Um, and when you look at a long list of stuff, uh, you get lost. So we decided to think about it differently, which is, okay, who are the people we need to work with? Maybe that's an easier way to think about things. So we looked around and we talked to people and said, well, generally there are five blocks of people and you can see them here. So for today though, I'm not gonna talk about the work we do for raising awareness with the public, neither with pharma and industry, 
know with the government. So I'll leave that aside. But we felt, if anything, without the doctors there, nothing's going to happen as well. We really need the doctors because they're the ones that we you know, go for help to and they're the ones that we need to partner with. Um, and when I mean doctors, not just doctors, it's allied health, uh, nurses, there's, there's a whole medical profession uh, around it. And of course, the families, right? Um, when my son was diagnosed, we couldn't connect with anybody, right? Doctors said they didn't know anyone. Um, but, you know, if, if it's just us, you know, it's going to be really hard. So what can we do within this space? And within this space, it became, you know, I mentioned earlier about the four sort of things that you know, I felt needed to be done. Uh, but it became quite simple, which is doctors, we just need you to know more because we understand that you've never treated an SMA child or you've only treated one in 20 years of your experience. You need to know more because what you studied a long time ago in university, a lot of things have changed. And if you understand a lot of things has changed, I'm sure you would care more about what you could do to help us right, as community. Uh, and then with families, I think what was important was not to always say, you need to do this for us. We needed to take the position and say, so how can I help? Could I start something? Could I pitch in? Could I initiate? Could I, you know? So these were two of the things that we felt then were the aims, right, um, for the initiatives, which is getting doctors to know more, care more. And then for, for us as a patient advocacy group to offer help. So the methods used, I'll go back to the four things. Uh, the incident study, uh, they are scientific methods. Don't ask me about it. But I was involved at least with an early discussion. And I think what happens is when you talk to doctors, you're going to run across one doctor who understands the reason why you're asking certain questions and they will take off from there and do what's needed. So one of the doctors that we're close to who's now sitting on our board um, had the idea uh, on how to do an incident study. I had an idea too, but I had an idea from Googling, which became impractical to do in a local situation but the, our doctor had another idea and she brought it forward so so when i put the incident study there it's really up you know dr chung's work that she's managed to publish this and that was very powerful and she relied of course on scientific methods to do this plus to do uh, extrapolations on therefore what the incidents could mean and you know how the spread was and draw the conclusions from there but when we did the impact of disease study, that's when I had to start to learn as well about quantitative study methods, qualitative study methods. I'm not the expert, but we can work with the experts who know these things and start to pull it together. So they are scientific methods um, that we uh, rely on. But beyond the scientific methods, as when I think about the multi-stakeholder engagements, um, this one we had to do very rapidly um, and we had to figure out how we're going to bring doctors of 10 different specialties, nurses, allied health all together with Free Pharma who've not done it before and it's never done before, you know, in Malaysia and we had two weeks. It's down to project management. Um, I think when you have the idea, uh, ideas are plenty, but how do you execute it? So we do re rely on, you know, agile methods. We don't need to overdo it, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I think if you take the right aspects of it and apply it in a way uh, which is proven, uh, then the results will follow through. Uh, and design thinking. That's something I like a lot. Uh, it's something that I use a lot in my previous work. Uh, and that came in with a care guide because with a care guide, it was bringing together all these international consensus statements of care, drawing up protocols, doing pathways, doing multi-level escalations. And guess what? You end up with this document <laughs> that the doctors will look at and say, mm, <laughs> not going to have time to go, go. You know, looks good, but not practical. Let me bring you to my clinic and you'll probably understand why. Hang on, you know this is not going to work in a clinic, you know, and, and then we start to understand it. So things like design thinking, I think were really important, or well, was, was really important to then rethink how we approach things, right? And we really then approach, we can, you can call it patient-centric, but I use a design thinking process to actually build a care guide and it worked really well. 
what has been my experience and learnings? Um, I think there's a lot, but let me talk instead about the key ones. The, the first is, you know, the four things I mentioned just now, right? Um, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to ask you to do an incident study, uh, but it's like, you know, I would like people to know more that as about SMA and that SMA is real, right? That it is so many babies. We don't see it because, you know, but how do you answer that question? So pitching for me is really important. You have to pitch and pitch and pitch why you want to do something. And it may not be necessary what you want to do. I think more importantly is what why you want to do something, here's what I think would work. As you keep talking to people, you're either going to get people that understand what you want to do and then come forward and add to your ideas, or they're going to ask a question that you can't answer but will trigger you to think, oh, hang on, you're right. <laughs> Maybe I'm not on the right track with what I'm asking for. But if you understand why, then can you help me, right? So, you know, I... I talk to so many people, <laughs> you know, I talk to so many people here, I talk to so many people overseas, I talk to so many people in conferences, you know, on email, I use my LinkedIn, I never stopped pitching, right, and I think that was important because when you talk to the first person, it doesn't mean the first person is going to be the one that's going to be able to participate in what you're looking for. As you talk to more people though, the ones that will want to be part of a project, um, will show up, right? And that's when you can start about what could we do? And I think that's a really important way for me as I'm pitching because there's no way I could do anything about it myself to get any project from ground zero to finish. You need various people and various people will bring different skills, experiences, networks, capabilities to the table that you then need to fit together. And I think that's at least the role that if you're pitching it to start to see how you can fit people together and how you can connect people up to then form that team that we then could really sort of say, this is what we want to do. And that shared goal is really important because when you have many people, um, people can pull in different directions because you're going to share goals You've got, you might have conflicts too. And, and you probably will have conflicts. <laughs> Let me be sort of upfront. You're going to have shared goals. You will have conflicts. You will have disagreements as well. And that's where it's important, I think, sometimes, right, that the, the, someone needs to step forward and lead the effort. And it doesn't have to be the patient group, right? It really depends on each of the situation. But I felt that, you know, it's, it's important. Like if you look at the burden of disease study that we did, you know, um, sometimes my wife would be doing the project managing and most of the time she did. Um, but for example, when you're doing the qualitative study, no, no, we don't. The advisor steps in, then they lead it. They project manage that piece. So everyone, I think, you know, working in a team will need to understand that we have to move and shift roles around. And one of my lessons learned is never stop learning. And you have to figure, you have to unlearn some stuff, right? I never came from healthcare. So I may approach things very differently. So I think that whole process of unlearning and relearning is important. And what was amazing is when you have all these experts working with you, they do too, right? Because along the way, we're going to encounter some sort of surprise. And guess what? No project ever works out exactly the way it was planned. Something's going to go wrong. Something's caught us by surprise. There's so much that we have to quickly sort of go back and say, well, hang on, uh, let's figure out what we got to do. And that's when this sort of plug and play I found was really important. Like when we thought about the care guide, you know, I had this idea. I had another doctor who said, let's talk about algorithms and AI. And both of us went down this track of having, you know, wow, tech and AI and algorithms. And guess what? The moms would step up like my wife, and say, ha, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> you know, I just need a book and a pen because that's all I'm going to be capable of in the clinic, in that environment. And that's when you sort of have to figure out, okay, what can we work with? What do we have right now? How can we sort of uh, make, you know, in a way it's almost uh, you work with the simplest thing that you have, right? And you sort of find what you have. Like the burden of disease study, we wanted to come up with the protocols, went to one team, different experts, after a year, you won't believe of pitching and talking. After a year, a year and a half, we still couldn't get it off the ground. At the end, 
guess what? QSMA did one, which is quite suitable. So went off to them and said, look, could I borrow this? Brought it back, localize it, and off you go. Sometimes we just got to find the quickest way and the easiest way to get something done. But all this is really tough. Like that's seven and a half years to get it even off the ground with some sort of study protocol. It took us five years to finish it, right? It shouldn't. It should have taken us nine months. It was according to the original plan. But this whole cycle of learning how to ask for grants and yada, yada, yada took so long, which means it will tax the family. It will tax you. It will tax the organization. I've got a small organization. We had staff come in and out. You got to have that team being able to pull the weight because, you know, otherwise it's very easy to sort of after a while say, well, this is way too hard. Um, we, you know, as a family with a, you know, I've got two kids with rare conditions. Uh, you've got enough to deal with just with our kids, right? To try to do all these things as well. It's tough. Um, so, you know, I would recommend everyone, make sure you've got a tribe around you, whether it's friends, whether it's family, whether it's colleagues and all these sort of things, understanding employers, all that, make sure that's there because you will need it, right? You, I, I think you will need it. And, and it really helps. And when things get really difficult, go back to why you're doing this. There's so many times I wanted to give up. So many times I, oh, I was so, so frustrated with how things were going, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think if you sort of go back to why, um, uh, it helps. Uh, like, like the care guide, you know, <laughs> I wanted it this way. Doctors didn't want it that way. I was just so frustrated. You know, at the end, it was like, you know, why are we doing this? Oh, to make life easier for the parent dealing with this in the early days in hospital. Okay, <laughs> right. It settles us down, uh, knowing why we want to do certain things. What's the impact to date in the healthcare system? Uh, so I started a nonprofit organization and more importantly, now we have a platform called SMA Care. Uh, in which we work together with industry and doctors, uh, and doctors from right now nine different subspecialties working together, uh, not only on research, but on tool sets um, that can actually be can support for families. Uh, from that plat on that platform as well, we look at sort of medical education programs. So it really is about partnering. Um, uh, and I'm pleased that you know this is happening. And that incident study um, was published, and this is a doctor that did it. The burden of disease study uh, got published in Orphanet. Um, so that's, that's now out there. I'm really happy that it passed all the rigors of ethics and approvals, not only locally, but internationally. So that's finally out there with the right data uh, and recommendations of what needed to be done. Uh, and 2019 was the first time we pulled together all these doctors. <laughs> they weren't talking. So we said, how am I going to get, okay, I'm just going to hold an event. <laughs> let's figure out what we're going to do in this event. Let's invite all of them. Let's bring them all together. Let's bring in farmers. Let's bring in the families. And let's run this day-long sort of workshop and sharing and all that. Um, so, so we got that done. And now we are doing different uh, smaller subsets um, of it. Uh, we've got the care guide, which is up. Uh, we're working on some other things as well. Uh, so that's now available. So it's being used in a couple of the multidisciplinary clinic clinics now. Uh, and the great thing is we've now, we now have doctors coming to us and say, could you please send some out? Uh, so, so, so we're happy with that. Um, of course, there's more work to be done. But what's happened is, if I bring you back down to sort of this time frame, uh, the, this was a time when doctors weren't knowledgeable about SMA enough to be doing anything, right? Uh, apart from advising you to take your child home, maybe do some therapy, or, and only when you're really sick, you come to the hospital. But during the pandemic, during the uh, lockdowns, um, all this plus other things, of course, became that readiness that the CEO had said, Malaysia's not ready. We managed to move the needle for people to believe that Malaysia is ready enough for compassionate programs or drug therapies to have started in Malaysia. Honestly, back in 2019, at this workshop, the doctors, yeah, they, 
they didn't give me any confidence that we would pull it off, right? But we pulled it off and it was during the pandemic, you know, with all these things that were happening, um, two compassionate use programs started uh, for two different drug therapies. It's not for every child, but I think the numbers are still meaningful enough to now get local evidence going and doctors, more than one, you know, various doctors now experience and seeing how transformative these drug therapies can be. But it's not just about the medicines, of course. We still fill around it with many of our programs, like telephysiotherapy programs, which we had to start. You know, we've got flu vaccination programs and, you know, other things. So, so it's other things that have to still fill around to make sure that the environment is suitable. Uh, but the ongoing challenge still remains, you know, how are we going to get sustainable, long-term, broader reimbursed access? A lot still needs to be done. Right. Um, I, I can't say we're close, but a lot of things have been done. Uh, and I think it's an ongoing journey. But judging by where we were just a couple of years ago, uh, I think a lot has changed. Um, a lot still needs to be done. Um, but, you know, that's the way it is. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's my last slide. Ah, questions. 